Government agencies are undertaking an unprecedented period of IT and application modernization. Efforts to effectively collect, manage, and analyze vast volumes of data combined with needing to operate securely in today's multi-cloud operating environment have placed tremendous challenges on IT officials uh, to manage IT modernization initiatives. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and here to talk about how IT officials are addressing some of those challenges is Gundeep Aluwalia, Chief Information Officer at the Department of Labor. Uh, Gundeep, thank you so much for joining us. And I'd like to start by asking, what do you see are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing in managing the rising volume of data while also trying to make data more accessible to a broader range of stakeholders? So Wyatt, thank you so much for having me and thank you for this great opportunity. It's always good to uh, be able to reach out to the community and talk a little bit about what we are doing and talk a little bit uh, as to how they can help us uh, uh, as well, right? So I always like to start by pointing out the diversity of mission outcomes in Department of Labor. So I'll take a minute from that. We usually get equated to the unemployment uh, numbers report that comes out uh, every few Fridays, uh, but we protect your 401ks. We are the largest processor of workman compensation claims in the country. We actually fly drones to inspect oil rigs. We inspect every active mine twice a year. Uh, transition assistance to veterans coming back uh, to from active duty is a responsibility of Department of Labor, not VA. Uh, we uh, are the ones who uh, uh, are, are every cent of unemployment insurance uh, money that goes through the states uh, comes through us. We set the policy and work with the states to get it out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that diversity of mission areas, uh, and I like to point it out because that is unique in the Department of Labor, uh, and we bring all of the IT uh, uh, for for this and bring all of the data into an enterprise approach. I do want to have, have a shameless plug in the beginning. We are hosting the Federal Tech Day on May 18th. So I encourage you and uh, all your viewers to come and join us at the Department of Labor. I think it'll be a great show. We are trying to bring uh, 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 feds to come and talk about how these uh, different technologies are helping us uh, 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 meet our mission needs. Uh, so what challenges do we have, right? I think the biggest challenge uh, that is uh, not unique to the Department of Labor, I think it's an element of one, the size of, of these departments, right? Two, also the evolution of different laws over time, right? So a law comes out and we create a database to respond to it, it has been the conventional way of, of doing business, right? And that has resulted in fragmentation of data. That has resulted in uh, 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 a lot of the agencies being unable to bring it together uh, in an enterprise manner, right? So I think that is one of the biggest challenges uh, uh, that we have. My mantra and, and hope is that as we uh, uh, progress in our journey, is to serve the right information, convert that data into the right information and serve it to the right person at the right time in a secure manner, adhering to privacy rules. Uh, 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 and that is each word in that sentence is extremely important in order for us to get around these challenges. And let me, let me give you an example of how important it is for us to have an enterprise approach. Right. I mean, we have. We, I, I talked about the transition assistance program uh, for veterans. Right. We also have the latest uh, 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 job opportunities by zip code in in uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Right. So there are immense number of opportunities for us to serve it up, and we also get information about the veterans returning from active duty. So I know um uh, john doe is from ohio in this zip code and has been a helicopter mechanic coming back from uh, let's say germany right so we can match what a helicopter mechanic can potentially do in civilian life if we start effectively managing our data at the enterprise level now there are 
uh, congressional constraints sometimes on these programs. We can only collect and use the data for certain purposes, which is for, for, for good reason, Congress has put some constraints on us, right? Uh, but there are there is an immense uh, opportunity, and we have begun that journey in order to defragment our data and unlock that information to serve it to the right person at the right time. Well, thank you for outlining the scope of the portfolio you manage, and um, I would love to follow up with that. In um, you mentioned um, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, how are you approaching the demands for data to move more freely and dynamically uh, across cloud environments and to other uh, organizations that want that data? Yeah, no, that that is a a, um, a excellent question, Wyatt, and and and. and that is a program that is very close to my heart and we've been paying a lot of attention. I don't know if uh, you know, but there was a TMF award for $9.6 million that was given to the department uh, for a part of that uh, conundrum. So we are modernizing our entire API infrastructure to make our open data more readily available so that I feel like sunlight is the best disinfectant, right? I mean, creating information out of this data that we are sitting on, we have finite amount of capacity within the department to do the analysis and understand. And so what is vital is to throw this in the public domain and allow for people uh, uh, to, to data scientists to, to find patterns to connect this data, these data sets. So we are revamping our entire public API infrastructure in order to, for us to do that. So that's one side of the equation. But on the other side, we are also uh, investing in creating a cloud-based enterprise data platform where all of this data can be aggregated and, and within the confines of what we, we, are, we can or can't do legally, right? We want to free information out of that, right? The third area is very important to invest in is the cultural aspects of things, right? So that, that is a challenge as well. There are programs who have managed this as their data for decades and decades and decades who are very, and rightfully so in certain cases, are very uh, 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 worried that people might go into this data and reach wrong conclusions or insights, right? So that is also a, a, an area where we are working with and creating capacity to move us culturally, uh, mm -hmm. to start thinking just beyond the confines of a particular program and start taking an enterprise approach. Because at the end of the day, we are here for that retiree, that worker, that veteran, and they are the common thread that bring the DOL programs together, whether, whether it's enforcement areas or protecting people's 401ks or uh, workman compensation claims or any of the programs. Well, the corollary about having data move freely uh, uh, kind of gets to our next topic of moving data securely. So talk a little, please, about where you're focusing your major efforts to protect the security of the data that's moving between IT systems and internally, as well as to those operated by outside entities. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, security is at the core of everything we do these days, right? Especially on a data uh, uh, layer. Uh, I, I think, um, so, so we are baking security into our application development. Uh, uh, we are baking security into our uh, network modernization. We are baking security, like I said, in the enterprise data platform that we are building. Uh, we are implementing zero trust across, uh, right up to the edge where the data is being consumed, right? So that is what uh, is extremely important uh, for us. And, and we have invested significantly both by adopting modern cloud-based technologies, but also then also uh, adopting some of the, uh, the newer zero trust, uh, not only principles, but tool sets in order to implement that zero trust uh, and pivot from the old parameter-based approaches. And that allows us to tag data from, from, and protect it not only from unauthorized access, but against cybersecurity incidents as well. So we're trying to bake it into the uh, our data schema itself and then layer it up with uh, zero trust architectures. 
Uh, next, I'd like to ask in light of how rapidly technology is changing, right? How are you trying to strike a balance between achieving economies of scale and still preserving flexibility and choice as you move forward with IT modernization? So Wyatt, I'm, I am very proud to say that we are one of those 24 CFO Act agencies where all of IT and application development is largely consolidated under the CIO, right? Uh, so we truly, uh, minus small pockets, uh, BLS being having special mandates, they are separate, but we have largely consolidated everything. That is great. We are reaping the benefits of consolidation. We are reaping the benefits of, but very often that is confused with stifling choice. And that is not the case. We are trying to find the right balance in order to consolidate and connect our application portfolio, start using low code platforms, start uh, uh, developing the data or populating the data enterprise data platform or the warehouse from get go by design, right? And then what we have done is it's my, and I keep telling the team, it's not about consolidating just to one tool because we all know how that works, right? We've had cybersecurity uh, uh, attacks on against one tools or tool set and that affects everybody, right? So we are large enough to consolidate and yet maintain diversity of certain local code platforms that allow us uh, uh, to, to, to uh, preserve choice and innovation uh, while not proliferating cost in an uncontrollable manner. So that's a dance we have we are we are trying to to do. It is always a evolution, I would say, why and we struggle on days, uh, but we've we've done it fairly well thus far. And uh, uh, because of that, over uh, the last few years, uh, uh, through successive administrations. Uh, OCIO was given the mandate and we've been able to consolidate all of the IT uh, with OCIO. And then lastly, I'm curious your thoughts on how, how do you view the state of relations between agencies and technology partners? Have, have they gotten stronger and more productive in the last couple of years? And how would you, what, what would you recommend would help unlock greater value in those relations? Yeah, so I will say Wyatt, that I feel that the vendor community, and I like to use the word partner community, not contractor community. I feel the word contractor is, has a negative connotation that I do not like, is vital to our ability to deliver our mission areas. And I'll tell you, they are as passionate as the federal employees and believe in delivering for the American people. Uh, I can tell you our partner relationships have never been stronger and they continue to grow strong, stronger. I really, uh, during the COVID pandemic, I mean, almost every partner that we have had came to us and said, hey, what can I do differently? What do you need today? Don't worry about it. Let's, let's get together and get it done kind of uh, a attitude, right? And that, that is heartwarming and, and that those relationships uh, continue. I understand there are contractual constructs that we have to comply with, but I truly rely on our partners to deliver the DOL mission on a regular basis. These relationships continue to get stronger. Here is a mantra that I will share with the partner community. Team up with each other to build solutions. Come to us with, hey, I can't do everything, but I can do these two things. Here is a partner I'm bringing with me who can, and but together we can create a solution that is exactly what Department of Labor needs in a particular mission area, right? That's the kind of teaming up that makes it even better for all the federal agencies to, to work with uh, the vendor community. It's strong and it keeps getting stronger, Ryan. Right? Oh, some great points. Well, Gandhi Alawalia, it's always a pleasure um, getting the chance to chat with you and getting your perspective. And I really appreciate your sharing your insights on some of these issues um, uh, around dealing with uh, data challenges, modernization, and security. So thank you so much for joining us. 
Well, thank you. I had uh, two plugs at the end. Come and uh, follow us on Twitter, follow us on LinkedIn, and do not forget the Federal Tech Day on May 18th at the U.S. Department of Labor on 200 Constitution Avenue. Come see us. Absolutely. Thank you.